the unwise judge. Once, there were two impoverished neighbors who shared a strong friendship. One day, one of them expressed his need to take his heavy barley sack to the distant market but lacked the funds to purchase a donkey. Sympathizing with his friend, the other neighbor shared his own dilemma about buying pots and having only half the money required for a donkey. The first neighbor proposed a solution, suggesting they jointly invest in a donkey. They could each contribute half the cost and take turns using the donkey for their respective needs every week. The idea pleased the second neighbor, and together, they acquired a donkey. For a while, they both benefited from their shared possession. Alternating weeks, one would take the donkey to the market, and the other would follow suit the next week. However, circumstances took a turn when the first neighbor inherited significant wealth upon his father's passing. Suddenly wealthy, he distanced himself from his old friend and sought to claim his half of the donkey. Claiming hunger for his dogs, the rich man proposed killing the donkey and splitting it in half, with each getting their share. The poor man, valuing the donkey over meat, suggested the rich man compensate him for his half. This led them to seek the judgment of a judge who, unfortunately, proved to be unwise. The judge, without careful consideration, declared that each man owned half the donkey and advised them to divide it. The rich man eagerly killed the donkey and claimed his portion for his dogs, leaving the poor man in despair, burdened with the loss of his donkey. Months later, the rich man decided to replace his old hut with a new one and intended to burn down the existing structure. When the poor man pointed out the potential danger to his nearby hut, the rich man dismissed his concerns. Asserting his right to do as he pleased with his property, Despite the poor man's plea to involve the judge again, the unwise judge gave the rich man the go-ahead. As a result, the rich man's hut burned down, and the wind carried the fire to the poor man's hut, leaving him with nothing but his field. The poor man continued to toil in his field, tending to a good crop of chickpeas. However, his misfortunes persisted. When the rich man's sons, visiting their father, ravaged the poor man's field, consuming all the chickpeas. Upon discovering the intrusion, the poor man confronted the rich man's sons, demanding the return of his chickpeas. Yet, the poor man's plea fell on deaf ears, as the unwise judge maintained that since the rich man's sons ate the chickpeas in their father's field, no compensation was owed to the poor man. Thus, the unfortunate man found himself destitute, with neither donkey nor home, relying solely on his field for survival. We've already eaten them, we can't give them back to you, the rich man's sons declared. Talk to our father, he'll compensate you for your chickpeas. The poor man approached the wealthy neighbor, stating, Your sons devoured all my chickpeas. I demand they be returned. I can't retrieve what's been eaten, replied the rich man. However, I'm willing to offer you money as compensation. Rejecting the monetary offer, the poor man insisted. I don't want your money, I want my chickpeas, and I will reclaim them. Wait. Hold on, intervened the rich man. 
Let's seek the judgment of the judge. The two men presented their case to the judge, who, without thorough consideration, hastily decided. The rich man's sons consumed all your chickpeas. They must return them. Cut them open and reclaim your chickpeas. Fearing for his son's well-being, the rich man pleaded, but my sons will suffer. Please, neighbor, accept monetary compensation. I sought money when you killed our donkey, the poor man retorted. I don't want it now. I want my chickpeas. With determination, he prepared to use his knife. I'll construct a new hut for you, the rich man offered. I regret burning down your old one. I'm not interested in a new hut, I want my chickpeas, the poor man insisted, sharpening his knife on a stone. No. Please, wait, implored the rich man. Let's consult the elders. My old friend, let the elders make the decision. The neighbors approached the elders, who deliberated extensively before summoning the two men. You were in the wrong, the elders rebuked the rich man. You failed to compensate your neighbor for the donkey, burned down his hut, and allowed your children to consume his harvest. Turning to the poor man, they added, yet, seeking to harm your neighbor's sons is also unjust. Here is our ruling, the rich man must surrender half of all his possessions, his trees, fields, cows, and sheep to the poor man. Only then can you live together harmoniously. Complying with the elder's decision, the rich man handed over half of his property to the poor man. From that day forward, they coexisted peacefully, never engaging in quarrels again.